Hi, it's Michael from Corona POS here today to talk about credit card processing and how to run your store in offline mode. But before diving into the offline mode stuff, when you step back to think about how a credit card transaction actually works, it's really quite remarkable. You swipe, dip, tap, or pin in some information using a keypad, RFID, a microchip, or a magnetic strip. That dynamically secured banking information is sent from the credit card machine or online payment gateway to the appropriate credit card network that will assign a unique interchange fee to the transaction. Simultaneously, it's sent to the customer's bank to make sure the necessary funds are available for withdrawal. The same bank then sends an approved or declined notification back to the credit card machine. If approved, the funds will officially be removed from the customer's bank account and deposited into the business's bank account. Meanwhile, the credit card processing company ensures the security of each transaction and that the retailer is following all PCI compliance. And the customer's bank is using various algorithms to determine the authenticity of every single purchase. Oh, and it usually takes less than 10 seconds to complete. So when your credit card system goes down, there is certainly reason to be concerned. Being unable to ring up credit and debit transactions for even a short period of time can be devastating to a business. Luckily, POS systems know this. That's why we have offline mode. And while it's impossible to run your business entirely the same way you would online as when you're offline, there are some easy workarounds to make sure you don't lose any sales. So let's start by looking at a brief history of credit card machines and then get into several ways that businesses can keep functioning even when the internet isn't. The modern credit system dates back millennia. And even back then, the idea behind the system was to help small businesses get off the ground. The Code of Hammurabi, for instance, established rules in 1792 BC for loaning and repaying money so that farmers could receive seeds and pay for them after the harvest was brought in. Though the systems of credit continued to evolve, it wasn't until the 1930s that we began to see a semblance of today's modern credit card. In order to identify customer accounts, businesses began using coins or metals with their own name, logo, and the customer's personal number. They would make an imprint of the coin or metal on a sales slip. Eventually, these simply became small metal cards that could be used to redeem store merchandise on a credit system. By the 40s and 50s, several airlines implemented a credit system to their frequent flyers. And by 1950, Diners Club was founded, releasing the first widespread charge card. Its founder, Frank McNamara, was inspired to start the company after he forgot his wallet for a business dinner. Monthly balances had to be paid in full with Diners Club, though American Express would later allow its customers the option to carry a balance. Of course, this technology has continued to evolve since then. As we just mentioned, the original credit systems used a metal or coin with identifying imprints. And the original credit cards that arose mid-century were really no different. At first, businesses would simply record the information on the card and make an imprint of the information carried on a credit card. They would then manually add the information at the end of each business day to collect the correct amount from each appropriate bank. Eventually, credit card technology added magnetic strips that helped businesses capture the card information more efficiently. But it wasn't until the 1970s that credit cards started to really resemble what we know and use today. In 1973, the first electronic authorization system was invented. This allowed transactions to be processed immediately upon purchase, ushering in more security and efficiency. By the late 1990s, the first wireless machines started hitting the market, giving retailers more flexibility and convenience. Since then, secure online payment gateways have facilitated an incredible rise in e-commerce transactions. And more recently, app-based payments have allowed for mobile wallets and transactions. The industry has also evolved through various new regulations, but we'll save that for another video. For now, marvel at how amazing this technology is that we use every day, often without thinking twice about it. So how does the whole credit card transaction work anyway? The process of each transaction takes just a few seconds, but there's so much that goes into it. And though the cost is sometimes frustrating, when you think about everything that goes into making it happen, it becomes a bit more understandable. Though that's not to say that many merchants aren't being overcharged, so be careful there. Now when a customer makes a payment, whether they dip, swipe, tap, or key it in, the information is immediately sent from the payment terminal to several different parties. First, it goes through the payment processor to ensure that the transaction is valid and follows all PCI compliance rules. At the same time, it also travels to the appropriate card network like Visa, MasterCard, Discover, etc. These agencies are responsible for setting the interchange rates, which are variable fees 
based on the inherent risk of any transaction. This assigned fee, typically constituting the bulk of a credit card processing fee, will be attached to the final processing total after sales are batched. Lastly, the card information will be sent to the issuing bank, which is the customer's bank, to check for sufficient funds and any fraudulent activity. The issuing bank then sends the official response back to the merchant's terminal where the card will get an approved or declined response. If approved, the transaction will be queued for batch processing at the end of the business day. The funds will be released from the issuing bank and deposited to the merchant's bank, known as the acquiring bank, with all processing charges deducted from the total. These are usually completed within 24 hours of the transaction. Unfortunately, all of the technology that got us to where we are today is erased once the internet is down. Without the internet, there's simply no communication between the credit card terminal and the card network's processor or banks. And depending on your city, down internet can be a daily occurrence. A lot of major cities have constant repairs or bottlenecks that inhibit credit card sales. So it's important for businesses to be prepared. This doesn't mean, however, that your business is temporarily shut down. There are some ways to work around the issue until your internet connection is back up and running. And while a hiccup in internet service is never ideal, it doesn't mean that your business is helpless. With the right retail point of sale and peripherals, you're nearly able to operate as normal. Beware of offers, though, that say that credit cards can be processed offline. Being offline means that you have no internet connection and therefore no communication through your Wi-Fi. Since all transactions are processed through the card terminal and sent to each respective party through the Wi-Fi, an outage of your Wi-Fi means that you'll have no way of completing a full transaction during that time. Now, as I mentioned, being offline doesn't mean that you can operate your business exactly as you normally would, but there are some ways that you can get quite close to doing so. Businesses can use store and forward, add a phone backup, get an additional internet line or load balancer, set offline mode limits, and use voice authorization through their processor. So let's go over each of these in a bit more detail. So first, as I just said, is something referred to as store and forward. Most modern cloud-based POS systems can store card information even when offline. This does not mean that the transaction will be processed in real time. Instead, it's simply stored and then processed as soon as the POS comes back online. While store and forward is a great tool to have, it does increase the chance of fraudulent transactions. If a card is declined or canceled, there is virtually no way of retrieving compensation from the customer after the fact. Therefore, it's important to set limits on the value of all store and forward transactions. Automatically set these in your POS system to avoid costly losses in the event that a transaction is declined upon your store returning online. Another alternative is adding a backup phone line. Most credit card terminals also have a port for adding a phone extension. This wired version means that your store will only be set back technologically 25 years instead of 50. All transactions can be processed in real time, but you'll be going back to a dial-up connection and each sale may take a few minutes. Still, it's better than nothing. To maintain a higher connection speed, you can also get a second internet line and load balancer. These days, it's surprisingly easy and affordable to add a second line. Retailers can typically do so for under $50 a month. This allows your terminal to connect to the other network automatically anytime one is offline. Additionally, a load balancer helps distribute any traffic going through your networks. This increases the overall speed and ensures you have the fastest transaction time possible. Finally, retailers can use voice authorization. One common workaround for the larger transactions during offline times is to use voice authorization over the phone. It's time consuming and will hold up your checkout line, but it does ensure that a particular transaction will go through. A merchant can call their credit card processor who will then manually run the transaction for an additional fee. So while these tips make being offline a whole lot more bearable, there are still some issues to watch out for when offline. And again, keep in mind that if your internet is down, there is no POS solution that will enable you to run your store completely as it would normally. So first, no transactions are authorized in real time. All transactions are stored in the POS to be authorized once the internet is back up and running. This means that any declined cards will result in lost sales. If a sale is processed offline but disputed by the cardholder, the sale will almost always result in a chargeback, again leaving the merchant on the hook. Voice authorizations too can be a huge pain and will come with premium surcharges. The back office features and analytics of your POS will not be available offline. If you don't set specific limits on offline transactions, cashiers will be able to store and forward every transaction. 
During periods of a longer internet outage, such as a natural disaster, speak with your credit card processor. Store and forward charges are not kept indefinitely. So use these tips to run an efficient business and avoid lost sales, but be careful. With the right POS, it gets a whole lot easier. Corona integrates with all payment processors, so you can find the best fit for your business. Plus, we'll help you get your payment terminals set up with extra lines and make sure you're prepared in the event of any internet outages. To learn more, click on the link in the description to start your free trial. All trial accounts require no credit card and can be used for as long as you'd like. For more information on understanding credit card processing and your point of sale, subscribe to our blog and channel. Thanks for stopping by.